all right so let's get started i have gained some more eth so if you can see i have some more uh test net eth this is fake money so like uh, it, it doesn't mean much but it will help me for testing and i can probably help some of you guys if you are unable to use the faucets yourself but anyway uh, let's close all of these tabs and let's clean it up a little bit we will go to hard hat because we will use hard hat so uh, let's keep the hard hat documentation open for now and let's go back to my home right now uh, let me try to make this bigger so I hope this is visible. Maybe it's a little bit bigger from here. Yeah, yeah. I think this should be good. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new directory. So let me go to desktop and create a directory called. So the project that we're gonna be working on right now is going to be a decentralized version of Twitter. And I don't know why I chose this. It's just something that came to my mind. We can build like a decentralized Twitter. It might be a cool project to get started with, but this is going to be our first project. And after this, I want you guys to, you know, run through your crazy ideas and send me your projects that you guys built. And we will talk about it. We will try to make it work. If you're stuck, we will have like our own community. So I'll set up a discord community and we'll add all of you guys there so we can answer each other's question and we can help each other out. Uh, because in this journey, we all want to learn together and we all want to grow together. So, so yeah, for now, let me create a directory called Twitter, which stands for decentralized Twitter. And you guys can name it anything, but this is what I'm going with. So let's just run with it. Now I'm in my directory. I want to do two things here, right? Like, and I want you guys to understand this uh, setup flow. This might change, but so far, this is the standard flow, which we will use to build our dApps. And uh, we'll build one app using this and I want you guys to understand how exactly it's done so that from your next projects you can easily do this yourself right so we, it will have two components it will have a contract part and a dap part so let me just uh, first of all let's initialize the dap first I guess because that's where, something we're used to so I will do npx uh, create before we do this I want to show you what I have I have node 16.13.0 which is a stable version if even if you are a few versions off it's going to be okay what you can use is uh nvm so that you can use any version so i use nvm to manage my node versions and you can install this version so nvm install 16.13.0 this will help you to uh, be on the same version that i am but if even if you're on a different version it shouldn't change much all right so uh i might not have this create next app but anyway we're going to do npx create next app i hope this is the right one um, i can quickly check in my documentation yep create next app at latest hyphen hyphen typescript because we'll be working with typescript and i recommend you guys get used to typescript if you're coming from a javascript background because a lot of crypto startups especially they all use typescript because types again are very important when it comes to decentralized applications so we have typescript and we will also create an example and we will use with Tailwind CSS, all right? So yeah, as, as I said, I don't have create next app, so I will install it here. And project is named uh, DAP, right? So what this will do is it will uh, initialize the project. So I'll just wait for this to get done. It will fetch all the required Next.js libraries and along with the Tailwind starter pack. So it will set up already Tailwind CSS and all this for us. So we don't break our heads doing that. So yeah that's done now let me go to dap and let me run npm run dev right this will start our dev server so i can see that it's live on localhost 3.0 and i can open this here we have our next year starter it's just standard starter but it's using tailwind styles we can confirm this and uh but before that let me just open this in vs code i guess or um what is going to happen here is we have a standard Next.js project and I can show you guys that like it has the index file and it's using Tailwind classes instead of normal CSS. So because we use the Tailwind starter pack. Anyway, I'm going to close this for now and uh, I'm going to go back to the previous directory where we had our DAP folder. I will also make a contract folder here. So let me make a contract 
and let's go to contract right this is where our smart contract code will lie so even here we need to start an npm package uh, we'll do npm init hyphen y this is the most basic npm package it will just create a package.json file for us so that we can start using the uh, npm inside of here right so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to again go back to the parent directory and i'm going to open this directory in my vs code because so that we can also uh, basically use both these right we can work with the contract we can work with the dap and we can keep them at the same place so let me go to contract and call this um okay so what i'm going to do here is basically rename this to twitter contract uh, let me just uh it doesn't really matter but just for the sake of the project let me just maximize this and yep so we have our contract here we have our dap here and the other thing I want to do is, okay, let me just go back to my terminal and initialize a Git repository here, right? So that I can push this to my uh, GitHub. Let's do Git init. Look guys, always, um, so I just initialized uh, Git init using master. Oops, let me just F and M main. And let me hide this annoying pop-up. Yeah. Now we are in the master main branch. And basically, uh, what I'm trying to do here is push this project to GitHub ASAP. What that will do is that will actually help us to, you know, build our portfolio because when you're actually looking for jobs or you're trying to demonstrate that you have learned all this, it helps to have a GitHub project. And like on GitHub, you can show that you have this profile and you have all these projects, all these repository. Anyone can check out your code, see what you've built, how you've built it. So that's why it's very important to, you know, do things in public and show show the world what you're working on right show the world what you're learning so create a github repository build your web apps create an account on twitter follow me on twitter tag me you know when you share just take a picture take screenshots take all this and start sharing them on twitter and tell the world that you're learning this and you can also tag me and i'll be happy to take a look as well so let me just push this to github for now let uh, for, uh let me actually create a repository right so uh this is my so if I go to my GitHub account, I can create a new repository called Twitter, uh, Twitter uh, decentralized Twitter, right? I can just, we can keep this uh, private for now because this is going to be a part of this course and I don't know how this is going to go. But what you can do is we've already initialized the repository. So you can just, you know, copy this part because you can add the origin and you can push the repository as it is. So let me do it one by one. I mean, this is all we need actually, right? So we would already exist. Right, I added everything. Okay. Oh, when we when we actually created the uh, npx create next app project, Next.js also in initializes the GitHub repository inside of the project. So that's why this is complaining that there's a repository inside of my repository. So I can remove it from the index. Uh, okay. Um, So first of all, we need the git ignore file. So let me actually copy the git ignore file to the parent. Let's just look at this. So now I have contract dap git git ignore, right? So let me go to dap now. So now all we have to do is remove these things, right? So I'll do rm hyphen rf dot git and rm dot git ignore now i think so now we don't have the git repository inside of here anymore so let me go back a step and actually let's just go to the vs code and see right so you can see all these files are committed they're not committed but they are tracked by git now and git ignore Yep, I, I hope node modules is not committed. Let's just also make sure we add 
I mean, node module should be fine, but uh, it should be okay. Let me close this. And yeah, we need to commit all these things. So yeah, let's just commit all this. Let's say git add dot. We have tap next, tap styles, everything here. And I wanna commit saying initialize bitter project. Now let's push this to, let's let's it upstream as well. Now, uh, as you can see, I've pushed the repository. Let's let's confirm this. Yeah, so as you can see, the repository is here. Let me also do one more thing. Let me move the readme file outside, right? So, mv readme.md2.slash, right? So, In case we want to like add some context in the readme file, we can just add it here. Now, because we set upstream, we can just do git push and it'll be pushed to main branch. This is fine for the side project that we are building, but when you're working in a team, you will always like branch out on your own branch and create a pull request and then merge to main because uh, as long as you're not the tech lead, you shouldn't be pushing things to the main branch. But anyway, uh, so we have the dap now. We don't, we don't, we still don't have the contract yet. So let me go to contract, right? and um, initialize the contract. And we don't need to keep using this terminal, right? Because we can use the terminal inside of VS Code. So let me open this terminal, CD contract. And since we already initialized this, we can do npx hard hat. This will install hard hat. Let me just confirm this, right? So let's just go to hard hat. And um, oh, we need to first add the dependency. So let's add the dependency before adding this. NPX hard hat would do it too, but this way we will save it to the dev dependencies of the contract. So uh, I'm doing that right now. After this, I know we need to do like, we need to initialize a sample project, right? So we could just run NPX hard hat that will run the hard hat that we just installed. So yeah, now let me run an NPX hard hat. Right. It will ask us, we just want to create a basic sample project. You can also try the advanced one with TypeScript and all this, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's just, uh, yep. Do you want to add a Git ignore? Sure. Uh, actually, no. Do you want Waffle, Chai and all these? Yeah, so we are going to use all these uh, extra dependencies as, we, as I mentioned before. So Waffle and Ethers, we're going to write tests and all this. So. We will use it. So let's just install all those dependencies while we're at it, right? So if you can just go through the hard hat documentation, they have explained how to install hard hat, how to start your project, how to, you know, compile it. You have all these options, you know, NPX hard hat gives you all these options and you can run compile, you can run tests, you can check accounts. So let's do NPX. Uh, okay, this is done. Let's try compiling this. So meanwhile, we can check the code, right? This is what hard hat in it gives us. So we got node modules here and we got some scripts, which is a sample script and this cache and artifacts are just like generated. And these, I don't think we need these files in the Git repository. You can check that these are not included, but the rest of it is. So what we can do is, uh, check out the files here, the contract. This is the main file. This is the, where the Solidity contract lies. And uh, we can actually download the Solidity extension. So I just, I had it, but I was, th I thought why not just do everything from scratch. So I started up a new VS Code instance and we can use Prettier as well. Yeah, actually let's just install Prettier as well. But yeah, so Solidity, Solidity extension will actually help us to, uh, you know, do a bunch of things like it'll give us some hints, some suggestions and all this. So it'll be useful to have the solidity. Um, it will also give us con uh, syntax highlighting, which is most important, right? So uh, let me hide this because I have increased the font size so we can see this. So callback not supported. So like uh, things like this,
So you can we can look at this uh, the compilation finished successfully, and we can also run npx hard hat test. So we can make sure that the thing passed because everything got set up perfectly well. So we have initialized the contract as well now. So let me just commit all of this. Initialize hard hat. Right. So uh, at this stage, I mean, you can choose to commit every, ideally it's better to commit often so that you keep a history and then you can always revert your commits, but you wouldn't lose any work because, you know, for some reason my laptop dies, I can continue from another laptop because my work is uh, backed up in GitHub. That's, uh, that's another advantage. But anyway, I see there's some problem here with uh, resolution of the file. I think this is because we have multiple node modules. We have a node modules here and we have a node modules here. And uh, that's why VS Code is having a hard time to find this, but we can fix this issue, right? Okay, so I did some reading about this. It's basically an issue with the latest version of the Solidity extension. As we saw, the thing compiles perfectly and the thing uh, tests runs perfectly. So it's not a problem with us, but it's a problem in the extension itself. And these things can happen, right? And it might be like, it might break your head sometimes, but uh, we should try to, let me try to uh, download a lower version. Let's try the previous one, right? That's being installed right now. Okay, and we would need to reload it. Okay. So now it looks like uh, it's able to resolve properly. So yeah, so there's there might be some bug in the latest version of the Solidity extension. Let's test it again. So let's just do npm hard hat compile. Yeah, because we, we didn't make any changes. So if we made any changes to the contract that would compile, but we can run npx hard hat test just to make sure everything is still working fine. Yep, everything is still working fine. And what did we change here? We changed the Solidity version, yes. So uh, I changed it from 0 0.8.0 to 0 0.8.4. So yeah, let's just, uh, let's commit it again. So um, Solidity version, right? Now we can take a look at this contract. Basically it's, it's a starter contract. Let me just close this terminal and hide this and just look at the code. So uh, basically this is the Solidity version that we're gonna be using hard hat console that sol is a, is basically a hard hat console uh, file where, which allows us to use things like console.log so that we can use it for debugging. It really helps file development. So this is a contract. This is how you declare a contract. This is your contract greeter, which is given by the hard hat uh, initializer. It's, it initializes a string, which is private. So this is the visibility of this variable. And that variable is stored in the contract storage. So whatever you declare here, think of it as like the, the immutable storage, like these things are going to be stored on the blockchain forever. Right. And on the other hand, on the constructor, we pass a memory uh, greeting message and this memory is the transient storage. So this message will be stored for temporary duration while the execution of the function. And it, it will log a message deploying a greeter with greeting so and so and it will uh, run that greeting. It will set that message to greeting and function greet. It returns, it's a view, which means that it's a, okay, let's just look at function greet from start, right? This is how you declare a function. It's a public function, which means it's accessible even outside the contract. View means it's a getter and it doesn't manipulate any memory or any storage of the contract. And it returns, uh, like, what does it return, right? It returns a string memory. So, which is like, uh, from the memory, it returns the greeting, right? Now, uh, the set greeting function, it takes a memory string. It takes a string, which uh, which is temporarily stored in the memory, which is called underscore greeting. And that thing is logged here in console.log. And it is set to the greeting, uh, the default greeting of the contract storage. So it's a simple contract, right? And if you look at the other files, there might be a test file. So this test file is actually run when we run npx hard hat test. Let's see what it does. It, it describes a test called greeter and it, it will log, it should return the new greeting once it's changed. So this is how you initialize the contract ethers.getContractFactoryGreeter. So this is the contract that we've initialized and then you would deploy it and you will pass hello world. So when you run deploy, what it actually does is it will construct this uh, contract. So using the constructor, as we saw, it takes an, a variable called greeting and it initializes this with this variable. 
So in the test file, we, we are passing hello world. So now the greeting will be set to hello world and it will wait until that is deployed, right? Once that's deployed, it will call the greet function and it'll check that it is returning hello world, which is uh, this function, right? So we stored hello world here by using the constructor. And then we are uh, calling this function that will return that message greeting. And finally, uh, it will set that to hola mundo. So basically this is just hard coded from the hard hat side and it will set this and it will run another transaction and then that will set the greeting again and it will wait for the transaction to complete. Uh, this is how the mining takes place, right? The transaction is not instantly completed because as I said, the network of computers which are running this Ethereum virtual machine will have to verify and we'll have to set the transaction in the blockchain. And after that is done, we can come, uh, we can check that uh, the greet method returns the new value and not the old value. So that's the test. And when you run NPX hard hat test, this is the test that's executed. So that's it for this one. And what we did initially is we set up our development environment. We have the root project and we have two projects inside of that. One is the contract, which is the solidity project. And the other is the DAP, which is the React Next.js product that we have. And we can also do one more thing. So uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is you can go to the contract directory and run npx hard hat node. So what this does is it will set up your local version of Ethereum, right? So now uh, it's simulating Ethereum network. So all these are accounts on your local Ethereum network. It has private and public keys. So all the things that happen, basically all the blockchain and, you know, the different nodes that I said will verify your transaction. So all that happens on your local host and we can try this. So let me copy this private key here and let me add this to my Ethereum. So in Ethereum, you, you see how we were on the Robston network. Now you could go to your local 8545 network because this is where by default your this uh, network will be started. You can see this here that it's hosted at localhost 8545 port. And what we can do here is, so look, this already got called by uh, MetaMask and we can import our account here. So let me go to MetaMask import account and paste your private key. And as you can see, my account with 10,000 ether is imported and we can use this to play around our local uh, contract that we write, right? So yeah, that's it for this one. And we will continue in the next video. All right, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you liked this one. If it was helpful, please smash the like button. Leave a comment down below if you have any other questions. You can also reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter. I'll leave my links in the description and on the screen. So yeah, looking forward to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.